At long last, here is my performance review for the GTX 570, which I never did one for, as well as AMD's new Radeon 6900 series graphics card. So that's the 6970, which I have on my test bench right now. I'm running Battlefield Bad Company 2 for my, uh, my sort of pre premeditated run through that I do on all of the cards to get you guys some uh, fraps recorded results. So I have the 6970, I have the 6950 here. I've also got on the GeForce side, the green side, the GTX 570 as well as the GTX 580. And then I've included in my graphs the 6870 as well as a Hawk Edition GTX 460. So that should give you guys some, uh, some sort of a, a, a measuring stick against a performance series card, so like a 460 or a 6870, versus one of these enthusiast grade cards, including the 6900 series, as well as the GTX 500 series. So the games that I'm going to be showing today are Metro 2033, Battlefield Bad Company 2, uh, 3D Mark 11, which is not a game technically, as well as uh, the Heaven Benchmark and I will be running all of them at 1080p, oh yeah, Crisis 2, and running at fairly high detail settings, that means I have enabled anti-aliasing in all tests, and the idea was to really stress these cards, so at the settings I was running in Metro 2033, actually, both the 6870 and the GTX 460 uh, are, were what I considered a fail, um, like it was 14 frames per second, I could measure frames per second, but it was just too choppy, completely unplayable. So anyway, stay tuned for uh, boring charts and graphs and uh, other things coming soon. So other than straight performance, let's talk a bit of a feature comparison between the green team and the red team for this particular generation of products. So there's a few different things that are similar. First of all, these are both DirectX 11 graphics cards with beefy tessellation performance, support for all the latest standards, and all of that noise and hoo-ha. Okay, so they are both feature complete. Now we have had times in the past when one company actually has a, a more advanced product than the other. For example, AMD was ahead of NVIDIA for DirectX 11 and NVIDIA was way ahead of AMD for DirectX 10, but we're not in a situation like that right now. So the feature differences that we actually run into are some different things. So first of all, AMD has their Ifinity technology. You can see they have a good number of outputs on the back of their card, two DVI, two mini display port, one mini, uh, rather, one HDMI, and that is what enables AMD as well as some special configuration of the card to run up to four displays off of a single card with iFinity. So that means you could do three displays with your crosshair in the middle, middle peripheral vision, and then you could have like your uh, your chat on another screen above it or whatever you want to do or you can even run just three displays off one card for triple HD resolution off of one card. Now to counter that NVIDIA has their NVIDIA surround which isn't quite there compared to Affinity because you do need two cards. So if you run SLI on any supported GPU, which includes anything back to as far as I know the GTX 200 series, you can run two monitors off the top card, one monitor off the bottom card, and you can get surround gaming, but it doesn't run off one card. Now NVIDIA also has a couple other features, including their 3D Vision, Okay, so I have the glasses up here, and this is actually a 3D vision ready monitor, so you can play in stereoscopic 3D. Mind you, AMD also has their competing HD 3D now. So while you have to bear in mind that both of these approaches are slightly different, with NVIDIA you're bound to certain standardized components, including the glasses and the displays. The AMD approach is a little bit different in that you are not bound to a standard. There are a bunch of different ways to go about it, but not all of them are created equal. Finally, last but not least, we have CUDA and PhysX on the NVIDIA side, as well as full support for direct compute on the AMD side. So these are both a couple of competing standards, and it really remains to be seen which one is going to emerge as victorious, so you kind of have to uh, pick a road and walk down it at this point and hope you made the right choice. So that is my feature summary. They both, oh yeah, of course, they both support uh, SLI Crossfire multi-GPU configurations. Well, they don't support, both support SLI. This one supports SLI. And they don't both support Crossfire, only this one does. But they both support uh, two-way and three-way GPU configurations 
configurations, except on their performance grade cards. So that is on the enthusiast grade cards, support up to three-way, but you can see both of the performance grade cards I have here, that is the GTX 460, as well as the Radeon 6870, only have a single multi-GPU connector each, so those ones only support two-way multi-GPU configurations. Graphs to come. Crazy Russian also brought to my attention that the Radeon 6000 series also supports adaptive anti-aliasing and I missed one feature that they both have and that is support for HDMI 1.4a which enables you to play back 3D Blu-ray with supported software and display. So in conclusion, I'm not really going to declare there to be a winner because I think it's a bit of a mistake for graphics card reviews um, because what happens is these guys are both so competitive, AMD and Nvidia, that as soon as the market condition changes, they'll both be adjusting their strategies and their pricing structures in order to compete better with each other. So all you really need to do is look at the performance and I do recommend checking out written reviews in addition to any video reviews you might see because Quite frankly, a lot of the written reviews have a lot more time spent on crunching the numbers and getting into the nitty gritty of the technology. So check out, for example, the review on Hardware Canucks, that is www.hardwarecanucks.com. The GPU review guy over there is a total guru, so please do check them out. And so yeah, I'm not going to declare a winner because what you really have to do is whether you're watching this video right now or watching it six months down the road, you can look at these cards and compare them in terms of their performance but you also have to bear in mind the price so you'll have to just see what are the prices at that time and how do they stack up against each other when you factor in the bang for the buck aspect of the equation so thanks for checking out my Linus Tech Tips review of the GTX 570 as well as the Radeon 6900 series and don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews and other videos